Still, this is a reconstructed keel site in the grounds of Peel Cathedral, St German's Cathedral, uh, which has beautiful gardens. Again, there's to symbolise all the different aspects of Manx Christianity. And this keel, or cell as it was, in uh, the Celtic church, uh, was designed for the priest, not for a congregation as such, as you can tell from the small size of the building that we're actually in. So you come in the west side at the door, um, there's a little stoop there, a little stone, which, uh, which there's water, holy water, which you use to bless yourself. And as we come in, you can see the pebbles uh, in the form of a cross in the body of the ch building itself. And we're not quite sure why they're there, but it's certainly um, from much earlier times. Uh, these quite quartz stones were used in the keels themselves. Um, both on the floors and sometimes people would bring a small stone in and put it by the altar. There's a special place for these to be collected there and many of the graves, including as far back as Neolithic times, do actually have little quartzite pebbles in them. There are lots, there's lots of discussion of course as to why this was, what the purpose of it was and nobody has a conclusive answer of course because it's not possible. But it's not just in the Isle of Man, these were in other places in Britain as well, and further afield, actually. So, um, because it's a reconstruction, it's used the um, different types of stone you can get in the Isle of Man. There's the Peel sandstone, um, which, because we're in Peel, this, this particular uh, keel has done. It's thought that these are later keels, the first ones were wooden constructions, basically. And then the has well, as you can see, the remains of a, a green roof. <laughs> um, so they, they would probably have had a thatched roof. Now, in this particular one, um, you're using peel sandstone. Uh, you're also using uh, Manx slate. And again, on the floor, you can see the different um, slates and the peel sandstone and the quartzite as well. So, there have been various roundels put into this to show different aspects of Christianity. Um, as you come in the doorway here on your left hand side you see the Alpha sign, which is the beginning in Greek. And you also, on the right hand side, you see the Omega sign, which is the end. So the beginning and end of all things. Closer to the altar on my left hand side is the Triskelion. And the Triskelion is the sign uh, for the Trinity. And on my right hand side, you see the sign of the fish, which is Ethos in Greek. And that stands for Jesus Christ, Son of God, Saviour. Closer up on the altar stone itself, um, there is one of the most beautifully carved um, stones. This is a reconstruction of the calf of man, crucifixion stone. There's only a fragment of it um, which has been found and that's to be seen in the Manx Museum as such and this is a, a reconstruction showing what the whole image may well have been like. Uh, so you can see Christ on the cross, uh, you can see the Roman guards with their spears there as well and it's thought now that it's perhaps the very end of the Celtic period as such and the beginning of the Norse period but it was originally thought to have been much earlier than this and it, indeed it has quite a lot of the Celtic art, artwork rather than the Norse style to be seen in it. So perhaps on the cusp really uh, between the two eras. Obviously the Celtic era did not just end, uh, the Norse took it over and they took what was popular for them. So some of the Celtic names of saints have survived whereas others have not because the Vikings like the more warlike aspects rather than the, the peaceful aspects of Christianity. Coming back to the altar, you can see I've removed a little stone here from the top and that in one or two of the um, chapels um, you were able to put your little quartzite pebble in there. There's a little hole in there which you can actually see. So obviously the altar is facing to the east and there's a, a window above it with a lintel. Also a little window to the south side um, on my right hand side 
and a niche on my left hand side which may have been for the um, communion as such. We don't know, but we think that's maybe what it was. Obviously you can see the stone walls, they've been reconstructed. They haven't reconstructed the thatch roof, but this is what a keel would have looked like in the past. And this one has been based on Lagnacilia, which is in the southwest of the island. And it's thought to have been a hermit's uh, keel in this case. Although there were roads, of course, along the coast, even although it was a very steep coast, uh, it still is uh, at Lagnacilia. But nonetheless, it must have had more people in it. And there were gravestones round about, uh, definitely Celtic era, era ones, these at Lagnacilia. They just had simple crosses carved into them, uh, none of the more grandiose artwork which went for example, to the stone in Lonnan churchyard, which is the only one still thought to be in its original um, resting place, which is beautifully carved uh, with a wheel-headed cross, just as the Triskelion has the wheel, the eternal circle on it as well.